John Steenhuysen famously said the public enemy number one was the EFF, and the worst case scenario for South Africa was an ANC EFF coalition. Mom, we've actually had ANC EFF coalitions in numerous municipalities around the country. And they've gone swimmingly. Yeah, it could be the fact that John Steenhuysen is actually wrong. It could be the best case scenario for the ANC and the EFF to go into bed together. Because the news is in Erkurleni, which is the East End of Joburg, so, you know, people who marry their cousins live there, and shoes were only introduced about two years ago, that area has been governed, in hypothetical quotes, governed by the ANC and the EFF for the past 18 months, and the PA is helping them there. And basically, it is going as expected. They're smutting each other. They're stealing phones from each other. The corruption is out of control. And even the ANC is saying, you know what? Working with the EFF is bloody hard work because they steal far more than us to a degree where we can't do our proper jobs. So therefore, maybe we should divorce the EFF in Erkuleni. And this is something that we said long ago, Byron. We said two commie parties going for the same constituency is actually not a match made in heaven because they both want the grift, and the grift is a zero-sum game. Point proven in Erkuleni. I'll see you at your Erkuleni, and I'll raise you a Durban. I'm calling it the Durban, not the New Age name, because in Durban, there is an ANC-EFF coalition. And in Durban, the EFF or the MMC for finance. Yeah, communists basically run the fiscus. They ran it dry. They stole everything. There's no money left. And the municipality is underperforming, like everywhere. And so what's actually now happening is everybody has to point fingers. And who do you think they're pointing fingers at? Well, the ANC mayor. They're saying, like, oh, it's his fault. Like, he did it. It must be his fault. And he's like, hang on, guys. You control the purses, and you're not paying people. And you said that you would paint, like, Durban Beachfront, and you didn't. And so what's happening now is, like, a bunch of finger pointing. So much so... The guys are literally murdering each other. They go to parliament or they go to their local council meetings and they moor each other and they basically say, ah, oh, it's your fault. Like, it's ungovernable in that area because the two of them can't get along. And the best part about it, Ramon, is like they're both accusing each other of stealing the most. Yeah, this is exactly what politics look like with these two clowns in charge. Very much so. Same as happening in Equilini, the MMC for Finance is an EFF guy. He still hasn't given the audited report to the Auditor General because he's shredding all the evidence. And, uh, you know, he paid these girlfriends a million rand each. There's four of them, by the way. He killed a person uh, in a car crash because he's convoy. Why does the MMC have a convoy? Uh, killed a black person, by the way. Uh, notably, the EFF has killed more black people than Morning Shot ever has. But, yeah, fundamentally, ain't in the EFF are just not getting along, which makes me believe then if we are really strategic and smart, Byron, we should actually ensure that the ANC and the EFF coalition at a national level is a reality after 2024 because the opposition is not going to take these people out. They need to be taken out by their own people internally. And I think the best way to do that is just to force them to marry each other, almost like an arranged marriage. Let's say the ANC lose the election for the 50 millionth time. Let's just remind ourselves, the ANC class, an electoral loss, is not getting a 50% majority. So let's say they get, I don't know, 45%. And then let's just say that they go into a coalition agreement with the EFF, for argument's sake. The likelihood is that Cyril will resign because he'll be like, I couldn't win the election. Paul Mashatila may go over, may take over, which Julius Malima has said he would prefer. And it would be Julius Malima and Paul Mashatila as president and deputy president, right? So we all know what the scenario could look like. Man, I'm reminded that Julius Malima once called Paul Mashatila a complete moron without any backbone, and he couldn't do anything useful because he was just incompetent to the hell. And that's actually why he liked Paul Mashatila, because he would be easy to control. Yeah, I'm not sure that that's a great way to start a marriage. What do you think? Well, that's assuming Paul Machatile even does become the president. I mean, you know, Stratcom has already discredited him completely. They said, you know, he owns a 40 million rand house and he's friends with tenepreneurs and, you know, all the corruption with his sons. And, and basically they've destroyed him before he has even become, you know, the president of South Africa. But if he isn't the president of South Africa, naturally the secretary general of the ANC becomes the ANC leader. The Secretary General, of course, is 
the clown in chief, Mr. Fix for call Fikile Imbalula. The thing about Fikile Imbalula is that Julius Malema says this is not a real guy because he cried when he was circumcised and he cried when he got the jab for COVID and he cries all the time and therefore he's a bit of a puss, according to Julius Malema himself. So, in essence, you've got Fikile Imbalula, who could be the president of the ANC, having to go into an arranged marriage with the EFF, i.e., Julius Malema who thinks he's a clown, like everyone else. How do you think this is going to turn out? As we say, the morning shot razor is the fact that the most retarded outcome is most likely. So therefore, no doubt, this is the best case scenario for South Africa. ANC, EFF, all the way. Yeah, and I think that it would probably give South Africa just the right amount of suffering to maybe never vote for these clowns ever again, because nothing's ever going to get done. Nothing's ever going to get completed underneath their, their rule. Finances will go completely disarray. Investment will go to shit. And these guys are never going to get along. And you know what? The tyrannical laws that everybody fears is never going to get passed because these guys are never going to agree on anything ever. Because it's like, even if they, let's say, on the hypothetical, let's say they both agree to do EWC, right? Let's say they even mm -hmm. find the, the numbers to do EWC. Uh, you tell me, Ramon, who's responsible for EWC, ANC or EFF? Because obviously when they get to the next elections, they're going to want to say it was their victory, right? So who's, who's going to be, whose victory was it? They can't say it was the ANCs, can't say it was the ESFs. We'll completely discredit them. Which means that in many instances, these guys are just going to undercredit, undercut and discredit each other because they never want the other to be able to claim the moral victory. How do you ever govern a coalition like that? Like These guys are not in it for the serious well-being of the country. And that's the point. That's exactly what we say, which is why if you actually get these two together, nothing's ever going to happen, mate. The country's just going to remain on autopilot. I say remain on autopilot because it's currently on autopilot. So nothing really will change, would it? Indeed. The only difference is the media wouldn't be happy-go-lucky. They wouldn't say, oh, there's, you know, reform around the corner, like they did with Sora on Portland. To this day, there's still somehow reform around the corner for some reason. And number two, I think there's just going to be an utter discreditation of everything that they do locally, internationally, we're going to become the laughing stock. Sorry, we're going to become even more of a laughing stock of the world than we currently are. We're going to have state 13 load shedding because nothing's been done to maintain anything because TIA. And yeah, maybe the Russians and the Chinese will just run this country. And you know what, Byron? I actually don't care. I think the Russians and the Chinese should come in, colonize South Africa completely. It worked the first time around. It will work the second time around. We can't be trusted to run our own government and our own country. So bloody hell, let the Chinese do it.